Please welcome, from Odds Against Tomorrow, the lovely and talented Kim Hamilton. Odds <laughs> Against Tomorrow, uh, in, in, for us film noir people, when we, when we look at these films and we list them and evaluate them and measure them, it's right up there at the top. It's a really seminal film that goes into a lot more serious stuff than the normal uh, heist film. Yeah, I thought it was very good movie. Yeah. Very good. It didn't get the attention that it should have gotten, but it, I thought it was just wonderful. So tell us how you came to get the part. That is well, story. I was studying with an acting coach by the name of Jeff Corey, and Harry Belafonte had studied with him. I think he was doing The World, Flesh, and the Devil, and he studied with him uh, privately. And Jeff read the script for Odds Against Tomorrow, and he said to him, if you ever do this, I have someone in one of my classes I'd like you to audition. And I guess maybe two, three years later, I get a call from Jeff one day, and he says to me, are you sitting down? And I said, I'll sit down. <laughs> so I sat down, and he said, Harry Belafonte is doing a movie called Odds Against Tomorrow, and they're going to have you, they're going to call you, and you're going to audition for it. And I really, I fell down. <laughs> it was just really exciting. So, so they, I'm sorry, me, go ahead. I'm sorry. They sent for me. I went to New York and I auditioned for the part and I got the role of his wife. And I thought I was going to be this big, famous movie star because <laughs> I'm playing Harry Belafonte's wife and he kisses me in the movie. <laughs> and it was, it was uh, a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I thought Robert Wise was a wonderful, wonderful director, and the cast was marvelous. I was just like gaga with all those people and being able to work with them. Robert Wise is a fellow, you know, I never heard a bad word about him. How was he as a director? Did he give you personal direction? Did he let you do your own thing? Did he coach you at all? Or was he more involved in the technical side of things? Well, he let me do my own thing, and uh, that was very good. So, absolutely. Yeah, it made me, it gave me a lot of freedom. It made me feel like I was special. Yeah, that's always special. <laughs> uh, the, the cast, I mean, it's, it's almost like a Hall of Fame lineup of, of great actors, uh, starting with uh, Robert Ryan. Uh, you know, the, the part that Robert Ryan plays is so just nauseating, and yet in real life, he was absolutely nothing like that character. No, he really wasn't. He was nothing at all like that character. What, what was your impression of Ryan working with him? I really didn't work with him. We, I only saw him when we had um, the, they had the cast at a private party, and I saw him that night. But other than that, I, I didn't work with him. What about Shelley Winters? <laughs> I didn't work with her either, but yeah. I saw her. Uh, something that was very funny. There was a, photo a still photographer on the set, and he was taking pictures. And every time she hear the camera click she would say, stop it, stop it. So he never took any pictures. And then when the book came out, you know, of all the pictures, right. she wanted to know what happened. Where was she in the book? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Shelley. Uh, Ed Bagelin. Oh, he was terrific. He was on Broadway at the same time that he was making the film in a play called Look Homeward Angel. And he worked every night in that play, and he worked every day in the movie. Wow. And he took me to the play one night, and I thought, oh, wow, that's just terrific. And Begley said, you need to see a play that he's in on Broadway yet. <laughs> right. And that was great. So how long was the, was the whole uh, filming? How long were you in New York doing both the exteriors and the interiors? I guess I was in New York for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do anything exterior. Everything that I did was interior. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, talk a little bit about your relationship with Harry Belafonte, both during the picture and then afterwards. Oh, he was terrific. He was just really wonderful and helpful and made me feel like I was very, very important and that I was going to be this wonderful star afterwards. It was just marvelous. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, I did a play after that in London called Raising in the Sun. And I, I got a call when I came back from New York, came back here to Los Angeles from New York. I got a call from someone on the telephone saying to me, how would you like to do uh, a famous play on Broadway? And I thought it was this guy that was his, you know, like whatever helped him, you know, the guy helped him. 
a lot on, on different things that he did. And he was like a gopher. And I thought it was that guy playing. Right. And I hung up the telephone. And I, got, I got a call back from an agent saying, no, 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 this is serious. We'd like you to come to New York and audition for this play, Raisin in the Sun. And I said, OK. So I went to New York and I auditioned and I got I got the part. I went to London. I did the play. Harry Belafonte came to London with the movie uh, of Odds Against Tomorrow so that I could see it. And it turned out that he was responsible for my getting the role. He never told me. I found out from other people that he had recommended me and that's how I got the audition. And I thought that was just really terrific because he never did try to get any kind of you know, let me know so that I would be beholden to him in any way, you know, for having gotten a role. I thought it was that, that's, that's highly praiseworthy and it must have been yes. gratifying to find out about that. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Um, talk a little bit about your career. Obviously, you, you were in, in, did a lot of work before Odds Against Tomorrow. Talk, talk about how you got into acting and, and how your career gathered momentum. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a wide metaphor, for it, but. At first I wanted to be a model, mm -hmm. and then I found out that I was really too short, and also there was the race thing, and in California there were no black models anyway. So I was visiting a friend one day, and we were looking in the want ads of the Los Angeles Times, and I thought, well, I'll just close my eyes and go down the one, and where my finger stops, that's what I'm going to do. So I looked, I looked to see what was there, and it said, do you want to be an actor? And I thought, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I said, um, do you, would you like to do plays, movies, television? And I thought, yeah. I said, we'll call this number. So <laughs> One I of those did. numbers really works. It's really legitimate. Well, I did, and it was legitimate. Oh, and the play, it was called Norman Rice's Showcase Studios. And it was on the corner of Highland and Sunset. Mm -hmm. And I did. We had classes, mm -hmm. and if we weren't in the classes, then we had to do the backstage work and all the things that you do when you're in theater. And uh, one, then I did a play called Buy Me Blue Ribbons. Mm -hmm. I played a secretary, and I got an agent. Mm -hmm. And I, the first job that I did, there was a show called a television show called Amos and Andy, and I was Andy's girlfriend on that for a couple of shows. So what 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 year was this right now? All right, oh, so in the fifties. Okay, got it. Um, so up until the time you got Odds Against Tomorrow, it, you said uh, you said previously you thought you were going to be the big movie star. At least Harry led you to believe right. that. Well, no, he didn't. I just thought because I'm playing his wife and I get right. kissed by Harry Belafonte. All right. Well, that's that's something <laughs> women would line up for that, particularly in 1959. Uh, so, so what after after Odds Against Tomorrow did, did you kind of just go? Gee whiz, where is the where is the there after Odds Against Tomorrow? Well, London was the there. That was the there. I went to London and I would stay there, except that at that time it was very difficult for American actors to get work. You had to join British Equity, right? But it was very difficult to get work, and so I had to finally come home because I was spending all my money. I would get the work. And then um, British Equity was very powerful then. Right. And I think they still are. But um, they would, the Ministry of Labor would ask Equity, should the person get a work permit? Mm -hmm. And if Equity said no. That was it. That was it. Wow. And I got work, but I couldn't do it because I, they would say no. And so I had to come home because I was spending all my money that I earned. Oh. <laughs> came back.